All right, folks, it's Freedom, Freedom Fiends, Fiends Live, the Freedom Fiends Live Sunday call-in show. Worms. Nima Vidati. I've also got my little brother, Frank Vidati. Say what's up, Frank. What's up, y'all? All right, and even Cedric Vidati is joining us. Uh, go ahead and pass the mic to Cedric. Say what's up, Cedric. What's up? What's up? All right, and of course, we've got uh, Mr. Michael W. Dean over there in Wyoming. I'm actually in a state that borders you right now. I'm in, I'm in the SLC, baby. You should come over, man. Come over and party. Yeah, yeah, I'll just drive through South Pass. Won't be a no big thing, right? <laughs> Stop, pick up some, Short some little drive. real liquor and some fireworks and some porn as soon as you get into Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, the border is a beautiful thing. As soon as That's you get you to see Evanston, signs. there's yeah. uh, porn stores, fireworks stores, and liquor stores all over the border. It's a nice little I called, economic boom for that little town. I called you last night to tell, tell you that I was feeling a little better, and I'm not 100% yet, but the state and its government flu cannot keep me down. Good. <laughs> so uh, that's I, good to hear. I called you and you were you were like, I'm like, what's up? And you're like, I'm having a party. And and like you got off the phone <laughs> really quick. And I was kind of irked. I was kind of like, man, put me on speakerphone. I want to party with your family. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I said I said to DJ when I got off the phone, yeah, they're in Utah. They're having a party. And she said, is that legal? <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were we were conjecturing what your party consisted of, like three two beer, nice. decaf Starbucks, and edited movies. <laughs> and Diet Mountain Dew. Edited talk movies, talk about edited movies, your experience with them there. And and a documentary. Yeah, I saw this well, documentary called Clean Flicks, which I highly recommend. It's an amazing documentary on uh, Netflix about the phenomena Nima's going to lay on us right now. Yeah, it was, there was a company here in uh, in Utah, and what they did was they would make Hollywood movies family-friendly. So they would take out sort of a pre-edited V-chip kind of thing. They'd take out all the cussing, all the nudity, all the violence, all the things that weren't choosing the right. <laughs> and they would uh, rent them out to people. And there was actually uh, lawsuits. Hollywood, of course, uh, found it to be a violation of IP. And so they sued this company, and I, I think they won, didn't they? I didn't watch the documentary, and I, I just remember hearing about it anecdotally from the people well, here. Well, yeah, the, the really interesting thing is um, Hollywood won, and th it wasn't one company. It was like eight companies, but they were all getting them from one or two editing companies. Ah, and okay. um, what they were supposed to do, they originally said that it was legal because they had a one-to-one -one ratio thing. What they did was they bought a copy and destroyed it for every edited copy they made. So it didn't wow. take away any any huh. sales from Hollywood, but then some of the companies started making multiple copies of it and cheating that ratio. And right. what they wanted basically was like Hollywood to do was to release these themselves to do it because they make them for airplanes and they make them for TV, mm -hmm. but they won't right. make them for the public. And the Hollywood says rental. Hollywood says it's because there's no demand for it. I think it's because there'd be so much demand for it that um, it would force Hollywood to do it to all their movies, like through the market. And then it'd be or, extra cost. Well, if there was that much demand, then that would negate the extra cost for them. Yeah, but the directors don't like their vision crunched. It's a really interesting, uh, right. you know, kind of like libertarian moral quandary. Uh, with you, somebody recently uh, put up a clean version without your permission or consent or knowledge uh, of your cuss video. Of your, a gun for everyone? Yeah. They sure did, and I, I have no problem with it. Yeah. It, of course, hasn't gotten any views. The problem I do have, though, is that I don't know if somebody has reported me on YouTube or what, but when I Google a gun for everyone and you, or when I search a gun for everyone in YouTube, uh, my video doesn't come up. But often the first one that will come up is the edited version, which has like three views. <sighs> so mine that has like forty five hundred views, man, it's not even on the third or fourth page of the search results. That's weird. It's probably it's like a, Google. The same is... thing happens to I own me though. Uh, when you search I own me. Often the radio edit comes up well, well ahead. You mean on Google version. search or YouTube search? No, which are, no um, Google works. I'm talking about YouTube search. So if you go to YouTube.com huh. and search in the YouTube field. Because on try, YouTube, go ahead and try I, it right now. No, I d I've done it and, and the dirty one comes up first. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just YouTube for me. Frank, why don't you try it real quick? So the interesting thing about this, this documentary and this phenomena of clean flicks um, is – yeah, Hollywood got an injunction and all these places closed down. And then a couple of years later, they get, they got a smart lawyer and figured out a loophole of fair use in copyright for educational purposes. And they said, oh, these are all for educational purposes and then started selling them again. And in like Hollywood was in the process of trying to sue them. But what they actually mm -hmm. did, what happened was one of the guys who owned one of these stores who wasn't the company who originated it, but he was the guy who always did interviews. So he was associated with it. 
Um, he got arrested for having sex with a 14 year old girl and they found kitty porn in his shop. Yeah. I think Hollywood set him up. <laughs> I really do. It seems like something they do, you know, like, Oh, let's make the, you know, let's make the, the Mormon clean flicks guy. Who's cleaning up our movies really dirty. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. To sort of discredit the whole, uh, genre. Yeah. Doing that. I, I think to me though, the whole thing just brings up the point of IP ridiculousness and I brought up a couple of casts ago uh, the concept that people all hate, uh, you know, or a lot of Star Wars fanboys hate some of the, you know, the episode one, episode two, episode three, and think that George Lucas had done a tragedy and a disservice to the whole Star Wars. Um, Is that know, where he re edited or... the stuff and like replaced all the guns with radios? <laughs> he did no, in some but... scenes. Did he? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, like, I guess I guess what I'm saying though is is shouldn't it be fair for anybody to reconceptualize art and and have it be open source, like software is open source, uh, and and in the end let people's desires, i.e. the market, decide uh, what version they want to see. The same thing goes with with um, with these Mormon or family friendly video things that wanted to edit the movies down. If there's a demand for it, if people are buying it, uh, if people want to see those things. Why is it fair for Hollywood to use government guns to stop that, to stop people from getting what they want? I mean, I don't agree with it. I wouldn't show those kind of movies to my family. Well, I guess I don't really have a family yet, you know, little kids. But um, but if you like it or you don't, that's not what matters. What matters I thought it was, is <laughs> – I thought it was kind of interesting that, that the uh, the people that edited your movie, your, your, your video and made it cuss-free – um, was something called free press publications, free press publications, <laughs> proactively editing cuss words, <laughs> proactively censoring. Yeah. 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 Well, I think what they were trying to do is make it is open to more people. Its I, I get it. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I actually gave him some tips. I'm the only comment on there. And I told him like how to do a better job at censoring your videos. Yeah. And, um, another friend of mine was like, well, you should send them some, some better done audio where you. You know, because I have all the the separate tracks, so I can actually just yeah. blank out the cuss words or reverse them or do fancy things to them. Um, like I think the coolest editing I've ever heard was on it was on that Wu Tang album that you had, Frank. Was it uh, Killer Bees? Oh yeah, 2? the Killer Bees. Yeah, and and the RZA actually put in kung fu sound effects for all the cuss words. Yeah, so I like how really Death Clock does it really thing. well. How, Death, how Clock Death Clock puts in like a metal guitar squilly, like ah yeah yeah they do yeah yeah. And so yeah. if, if the person, you know, wanted to get in touch with me, all he had to do was message me and, you know, I don't feel like it's worth it for me, but if he would have asked, I probably would have been more likely to send him some clean audio for that, you know, if he does the rest of the work. I um, kind of feel at this point, it's like, that's, that's up for other people to do. You yeah. Know, we put yeah. it out and if they, we do so much work, it's like, we don't have time to make the cuss free edit. No one's going to watch. Someone else can do that. Right. Yeah. But and, adding and it, a beep on top of a single audio track just sounds like it doesn't sound good. I, mean, I know, not to but it, but it could have been done a little better. But I'm not I'm not dissing him for doing it. It's cool that he did it. Uh, but uh, living, you know, you could have done it better from from the stereo track that he had. Even yeah, yeah, you know, I would I told I him to have. use a lower beep, you know, a four forty, make it quieter, and just try to put it more on beat. It could have been done better. Which, but you know, yeah. I'm not dissing him, but he put it out there. You put something out there, you're open to critique. So we're critiquing it. Right, creative, right. creative but critique. Positive. I, critique. I think the root and the moral of the story, though, is is there's nothing wrong with censorship as long as it's um, you know An done in a free, voluntary matter. Yeah. yeah. If somebody wants to see something censored. By all means, go go censor the hell out of something. And, yeah, and we did a we did that a, out there. We did a censored version of Guns and Weed: The Road to Freedom that no one watched. You know, yeah. it was kind of funny too. Like some of the titles that this Mormon uh, uh, video family friendly video company, like they did like Pulp Fiction and like like Kill Bill. I'm like Kill Bill without the violence would be like the opening credits. You know, right? right, right. That's about yeah. it. Not long at all. <laughs> but. I mean, have a go at it, right? I mean, it obviously doesn't still exist, I don't think, that I know. So. Yeah. Didn't work out, but I can't fault them. Well, I, do anything I, you know what, though? There's like, a, there's like a BitTorrent version of it. There's like a, a people are oh, sharing those. Yeah. No. Not on BitTorrent. It's on some dark site that's only open to Mormons by password. So good for them. Well, well, 
Good for them. We'll have more coming up. Freedom Beans Live. Yeah. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at freedomfiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time, on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Badati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. It's your boy Nima Vidati. We're coming back live. And I know our audience often likes to hear uh, my family, especially the younger kids, my younger siblings, talk about liberty and how they feel about it. And, um, you know, it's no exception. It's not a geographical thing. Even my little brother Cedric here in Utah is a big fan of Ron Paul. He's... You described yourself last night as an anarcho-capitalist. Would you still say that, Cedric? Um, yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> um, go ahead and tell us tell us what you think about liberty. What's your conceptualization of how liberty works? Um, I am fine with what anybody does as long as they do not violate me or somebody else's life, liberty, or property. Nice, nice. And you're also a big Ron Paul fan. Is that... A thing among kids your age, 15-year-olds, or are you the only one in your school? Are you the odd man out, or are there other people like that? Um, I'm probably like, well, there are some people that have heard of Ron Paul, but nobody at my school would ever endorse him. They think he's <laughs> an isolationist and crazy and uh, all these things. It all comes down to his foreign policy then? Yeah. Really? 15-year-olds 15, 15 care about that and have an opinion on, on that at school now? Well, just in my debate class, we uh, talk about some controversial things in there. But do they ever say that Ron Paul's a racist? Um, no, they don't know anything about him. So I would imagine they would, in Utah at least, they would more attack <laughs> Ron Paul from the right. You know, saying things like he's an isolationist. Yeah. And if he was elected, then we would get taken over by Sharia law, and the Muslims would kill all of us, and things like <laughs> that. Yeah, in Utah, they probably like if someone's a racist, as long as it's racist <laughs> for for white people. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, well, you know, we're here. You're here in Salt Lake. What were people like during the election? Was everybody a Mitt, on Mitt Romney's nuts or what? Yeah, everybody was riding Mitt Romney. So. <laughs> well, he's a Mormon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did, What did you tell those people? Did you just shake your head or did well, you just? He agreed with Obama on almost every main point. Yeah, he yeah. agreed on the wars. He yeah. agreed on everything. You know. Yeah, I mean, except funding NPR. Swats- <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so hilarious how in That's the elections they, they always pick. Yeah, they pick some little piddly thing <laughs> that doesn't make any uh, headway Inkling. in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I mean, what, what is it? Like ten percent of NPR's funding is government funding. Some small amount. So uh, and and then how big? Yeah, of a like one of bomb. The budget one is one it? day of the bomb budget, if that. One hour <laughs> of the bombing budget. Right. Literally, literally. For the whole year. Yeah, such a small, um, you know, pennies compared to the rest of the money the government wastes. And and that's what everybody fights about. It's ridiculous. We can continue this war with viewers like you. (laughs) 
<laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? A, a donation war. Well, that's kind of what they did with the the war bonds back in World War Two, isn't it? Yeah. Although they made you basically into a commie if you didn't buy them. Ah, uh, uh, so there yeah. is a lot of horizontal enforcement going on. Yeah, you're you're a pinko commie if you don't support the war effort and yeah. ration and and don't eat meat and don't eat butter so the soldiers can have it. I know. Then there's war pigeons, which we're going to get into next part, next period. <laughs> we are next class. So, um, Cedric, you were telling me you've only read two books. What two books have you read? Uh, I've only read um, "The Law" by Frederick Bastier, <laughs> and um, I've read awesome. a little bit um, of some Murray Rothbard, but that's about okay. it. Okay. Yes, he wants to read more Murray Rothbard, so I was going to give him the Anatomy of the State PDF. I'm going to send uh, that to him. That's a good and one, Frank. It's the best primer, I think, for these ideas in. In a very scholarly, well reasoned, short, it's like fifty pages long. Um, you know, and pretty much pretty much everything or a lot of the theory can be traced back to, to that Rothbard book. So um, Cedric, what did you get out of the law by Fred, Frederick Bastiat? We talk about Bastiat all this. every libertarian does, you know. Well Bastiat says I what don't. did you take from it? My Michael says <laughs> it. I say, Well if favorite. you instead of <laughs> quoting Bastiat. Yeah, takes all kinds. Uh, my favorite part um, of that whole book, The Law, was when he was talking about socialism. To your mouth. Uh, or when he was talking about uh, socialism, they say, um, we don't want to have the government pay for things like education, but that doesn't mean we don't like education. Ah, yes. So That's a beautiful point because everybody is so brainwashed that they fall into that. If the government doesn't provide something, then that thing just won't exist anymore. Hey, as, Nima. As you if know, without. I know, I know. <laughs> Yeah, Keynesian, Keynesian ideology. Yeah, yeah. You know what I and learned about so, Keynes? Keynes was what? an advocate of um, of eugenics. Ah, yeah, that makes complete sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keynesian economics with who lives and dies. Right, right. He was just a, a creepy guy all around and very weird and had mystical ideas of spirit animals affecting the economy and... I don't. I don't understand. Really, how I thought so, w was the animal stuff like literal. I thought it was figurative. I think it was figurative, but still, saying animal spirits. It's well, kind did of he invent the bulls that. and 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 bears thing? Maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to like ask my the, dad. Speaking of my your dad, had a PhD in we've, Keynesian we've heard from yeah, we've heard from every member of your family now. I think, and they're all uh, pretty much aligned with your ideas. I want to hear from your dad. <laughs> well, maybe I'll go Come run on. up and get him during the break. You should run up and get him. Come on, man. He yeah. he left Iran and came here. I want to hear. I want to hear his take on on the world. We had okay. my dad on. Okay, my dad didn't okay. agree a hundred percent with us, so we should get your dad on here. That's fair enough. Although um, last time we brought this up, he says, "You know, you guys, I've lived in America longer than any of you have <laughs> to his kids," which is true because he's been in America for what forty years now, something like that. Crazy amount. None of us are that old, so. <laughs> and what telling you you're wrong and he's right? No, just he's not really a foreigner. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's but, been in America longer than no, any of us. No, but he's your dad. My dad's not a foreigner either. My dad's been in America longer than most humans on the earth. So we had him yeah. on. So I want to hear Ahmed. Get Ahmed on here. Ahmed. 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 Yeah. yeah. No, no fancy, uh, no fancy wording or pronunciation there. Just Ahmed. Just like you would say it in English. Ahmed. Uh, Very yes. simple. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. That that might be a cool. fun segment. That'd be awesome. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um we got more. Um yeah, Cedric, what else would you like to, I, I guess I just want to know from Cedric, do you feel like you're isolated in your thoughts on liberty and, and read, reading Bastiat? Yeah. Are there friends in school you have that, that are into that too? I mean, how did you come across this kind of stuff? Um, well, in eighth grade I had a teacher named Mr. Murphy who was like a big constitutionalist uh, but he would always hint at it and I knew a lot about history but I didn't know anything about American history I was very uneducated in you know what was going down in America mm -hmm. I was more of like Middle East because that's where my dad's from right so he comes up and he was talking to me he's like oh so you really like history huh and he would hint at me little things during class mm -hmm. and what I should pick up so one day he came up to me and talked to me after school and he's like you know, you should read Frederick Bostey's The Law. Nice. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll nice. check it out. And then I got it for Christmas one year and I read it. Oh, 
Awesome. Who gave it to you for Christmas? Um, my grandma Brooks. She's uh, uh -huh. my stepdad's mom. Did you ask her oh. for it, or did she pick it out for you? She just picked it out for me. Wow, oh, that's awesome. She's really smart. That's really awesome. Um, interesting too that it was a. Uh, your school teacher, your history teacher in yeah, eighth grade? Yeah, history teacher. Okay. okay. So I guess some good can be done. Um, but he was hinting at it. He didn't let the other kids know this kind of... He thought you were special enough to pass the truth on to? I guess, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Handing little red p pills after class. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have more fiends coming up after we take this uh, short pause. Let's go ahead and sell some things. Go ahead and stick with us. Plenty more fiends. Morphine. Morphine. Morphine for the fiend soul. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to advertise your product or service to a large built-in audience of liberty-loving consumers who truly dig the free market? Freedom Fiends is now selling ad space. Slots are reasonably priced, but limited, so contact us today. Write the fiends at talkback at freedomfiends.com. That's talkback at freedomfiends.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Thanks for sticking with us. We are Worms. back on the Freedom Fiends live show, and we're going to talk about war pigeons. <laughs> war pigeons. War pigeons, yes. Not to be confused with war pigs. Uh, no. <laughs> No, not at all. I, I would normally be singing some Black Sabbath about now, but uh, I'm not quite that recovered yet from my government flu. Yes. I sound better, but I can't, like, screech at the top of my lungs yet. And I look pretty weird. If you saw me, I kind of look like <laughs> the mad... I, I look like uh, McFly. No, what's the guy, the mad scientist in uh, Back to the Future? I kind of mm. look like him right now. Like, my hair's all, you that. know. I've been wearing Doc. a hat. Yeah, Doc. Doc. I've been wearing, like, a wool cap for, like, ten days. Or, like, eight days. Nice. You know, sleeping nice. it all the time. And, like, I take it off, and my hair looks like Einstein on a bad hair day. <laughs> you mean Einstein every day. Yeah, it's actually been really good for my diet. I'm, I'm at, like, 165 pounds now. I'll probably gain a few pounds <laughs> back. I, like, ate a lot over the holidays. But uh, just being sick, you just, you know, poo it all out. <laughs> so war pigeons yeah. war pigeons man um yeah nice segue i was real fascinated with well pigeons poo so there there you go there you go okay I, i'm actually looking at pigeons out the window right now we we at the fiends are fascinated with uh pigeons if you go to you know our 404 page if you type in like freedomfiends.com slash and then anything that's not an actual page on it it'll go to our default 404 page which is a picture of a a pigeon being retrofitted for um to carry SD cards of Freedom Fiends <laughs> after Freedom Fiends becomes illegal to share on the internet. We'll it's sort of our, pigeons to your house. Yeah, it's sort of our analogy for our BitTorrent uh, campaign, which you can join. And we also have new buttons. You know, we should get pigeon buttons, I think. Maybe get uh, Freedom yeah. Fiends BitTorrent pigeon buttons. It's not a bad idea. And of course, pigeons have been used by uh, people throughout history to deliver things because of their amazing homing ability yeah. um, and have even been defended uh, by the state um, during the Defense of the <laughs> Realm Act, Regulation 21A, uh, during what country? World War I in Britain, actually. Yes. Um, here the is king's a post. Pigeons. The king's pigeons. The king's pigeons. pigeons. <laughs> right. 
It was a it was a crime to uh, kill, wound, or molest homing pigeons. It was punishable under the molest. defense of the realm regulation. Although the government mo- can molest you, <laughs> right? Government can molest you. Can't molest the pigeons though. Six months imprisonment or a hundred pound fine. Uh, and this is World War One, so I'm guessing a hundred pounds, pounds was, was couple quite a pretty dollars, penny back then. Five or six yeah. thousand dollars. Um, they wanted to remind the public that homing pigeons are doing valuable work for the government and are requested to assist in the suppression of shooting of these birds. Hmm. So does that mean uh, w- would competing countries have like dudes out there with 12 gauges full of birdshot <laughs> shooting random pigeons just in case they were carrying information across enemy lines? I don't know, man. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, pigeons were used for reconnaissance. Uh, I don't know if they ever put a bomb on them but they did try to guide missiles with them we've talked about that they They have a pigeon in there and then the pigeon would have three windows in the front of the missile flying through the air and it would it would peck at the target and uh it would move it didn't work too well but they worked great for reconnaissance in world war one they put little cameras on them and the image for today's uh today's podcast is going to be three pigeons handsomely handsomely uh modeling their different little <laughs> pigeon photography gear pigeon photography well that was the other thing they also put cameras on pigeons so uh, pigeons could be reconnaissance sort yeah. of a, a natural drone uh before yep. you know actual drones and the swiss had a homing pigeon service department of their military and there's a picture uh on the war pigeon article on wikipedia of some really gay sexy looking male and female mannequins it kind of looks like the cover of a Kraftwerk album or something but uh it's the pigeon it's the pigeon service department yes and did you, you see be a this? pigeon sergeant major in the women's <laughs> this military unconfirmed service. recent uses read that uh part of the pigeon post article yeah in 2010 indian police expressed suspicion that a recently captured pigeon from pakistan might have been carrying a message from pakistan so oh uh, no <laughs> as, as with um that whole afpac region in general AFPAC. Uh, the, is that a word the quote unquote yeah that's a word yeah, awesome. yeah the quote unquote uh insurgents um they, they can borrow from old technologies and even use old they're pretty much winning with old technologies i mean they're using pigeons and mosin nagants i'm surprised they're not using like cannons you know like wheeled (laughs) cannons with cannonballs right well i think they do use mortars they use uh, old soviet technology yeah from the 50s and 60s but uh right and there were decorated war pigeons in england that won medals (laughs) named commando patty william of orange mary of exeter and gi joe they named one of them gi joe that was weird huh interesting i didn't know that. war pigeons <laughs> war pigeons yeah so anything else you have to say about war pigeons or you just thought it was cool uh <laughs> mi mi5 which is uh is that their fbi or their cia mi6 is their cia in england but what's mi5 something like that but uh it was still concerned about the use of pigeons by enemy forces and until 1950 they arranged for a hundred birds to be maintained by a civilian pigeon fancier see they had their their citizen <laughs> pigeon militias they had it, it wasn't just the military it was like you you served your country by raising your own homing pigeons sort of right. like my dad raised <laughs> hemp in world war ii to help the war effort right <laughs> with government all in service blessing. of the state of course yeah, yeah. Yeah, the state is co-opting the pigeons. Yeah. Be wary of the pigeons. Yeah, pigeons. So, so I um I had a fiend fan recognize me at uh, when I was snowboarding yesterday, or pseudo recognize me. He, really, uh, got in contact with me on Facebook. Yeah, because I we went snowboarding, or I went snowboarding. Most of the rest of my family went skiing uh, at Brighton, which is it's a really cool ski resort. It's usually where the locals go here, um, and. <laughs> later in the day i posted some pictures and was like yeah i was at brighton you know teaching the wife to ski and uh one of the fiend fans who's also a friend on facebook was like well then i saw you today i i was going to come over and talk to you but then i thought well it's just could just be another brown guy with a beard <laughs> so he didn't come talk to me but uh i guess he should have so if you see a brown guy with a beard and you think it may be me might as well risk it. Just come and come and drop some fiend words and see wow. if the brown person with the beard responds to you. That's amazing. I never get recognized. Of course, I never leave the house. But even if I do, you know, <laughs> I'd never yeah. get recognized anywhere. 
uh, in my travels. I used to a lot. I used to be like, I remember when I was in my band bomb, like, you know, we'd be pumping gas at fucking in, in like, you know, Duluth, Minnesota or something. And we'd be at the gas station and I'd get out to pump gas and, and we'd hear someone, some guy across the parking lot of, of the gas station go, is that Michael Dean? And like the guys <laughs> in my band would be like, no way. Like just, I don't know how, I just knew people from all over the world most of my nice. life. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real good feeling, isn't it? I've had um, it happen although- like at a, at, at a, a ga- uh, at bus station in Germany too. Like not, nice. and not from, from music or anything like just like someone like from San Francisco just happened to be in that bus station. It was like Michael Dean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when people used to recognize me for my TV work, it was always nice, but it feels much they more were like always old people. It, yeah. It was always old people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of nice though. I had a guy, an uh, old guy at Walmart who was a checker um, tell me, you know, I really like what you do. Cause you know, um, you're not like the other reporters. You're not like those other guys. <laughs> you're not like the other reporters, because uh, of course, you know they're very tend to be very liberal status. And you know, I had people in Wyoming say that I was Fox News light. They were of course confused about the situation, but um, people liked that I wasn't, you know, a California liberal who was carpet bagging at their TV station in Wyoming. But I always felt like I earned it more when it was something I did myself. Like I had somebody in a bar in Wyoming once recognize me from the I Own Me video, and. Uh, that one recognition was better than any of the hey aren't you the weatherman because for some reason because you earned it you earned it yeah because i you know we we really earn everything we do lately like i was thinking about this like your 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 video uh the gun for everyone has does it have over five thousand now let me check it has about has four thousand right right on the board right on the cusp um and we really earned it it's like nothing we do goes viral it's like but we get a good number of hits on stuff, but it's never like the overnight success. We just work and work and work at it. And our fiends help us. Oh, help yeah. Help share we it. do it without the fiends. Hey, do you think War Pigeons, where we're, do you think drones came out of War Pigeons directly? Well, that need for reconnaissance and for sending yeah. something through the sky. It's, it's a need and it's a niche that's now filled by technology. But yeah. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. Yo, Yo. Freedom Fiends. It's the Freedom Fiends live. You haven't given out the call-in number yet, but if you want to call in, somebody call in. It's a call-in show. Have your dad call in. Then he won't have to come downstairs. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he is up there with his girlfriend. Yes, he's the Zohan. But maybe he's just busy. He's the Zohan. Yeah. He's the Zohan. Yeah, it's uh three zero seven two one five five one seven one. If you want to call in three zero seven two one five five one seven one. What do you say? Uh, our dad declined, but not politely. He said he has shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll we'll have other awesome. opportunities. Yeah, my dad yes, would never. Is. My dad would never cuss, but 
He has his own way of cussing. He says Obama's feet stink and he's a liar. Feet stink. He's a and liar. a socialist. <laughs> Does your dad vote for Obama? Um, uh, Cedric says yes, he did. <laughs> uh, someone asked. Someone asked if your dad is wearing a jogging suit and gold chains. Mm-hmm. I said that's racist. <laughs> that's statist. That's statist. That's statist. That's statist. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna make a pod. I'm gonna make a podcast called Das Statist. Das Statist. Das Statist. <laughs> It'd be fun to do. A, you know, what would be really fun. Would be to do a side cast. Maybe I'll do this if I don't have. Uh, maybe I'll do it with the Gumbo someday when I don't have an idea or an interviewee. Of just do Shit. one. Do do a podcast called Das Statist, and you just completely rant the opposite of what you believe. You just go on there and <laughs> say the most statist shit you can possibly say. Right. Well, also like how you kind had like the, the end of decline to state when they do that with all their yeah. their guests is have them be take the uh, opposite position. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's kind of a debate debating exercise is to take the opposite well, yeah, position. Also, that. how y'all had the y'all used to do the tyranny today's and the whatever else you had. You can do that yeah. with the death status. Have an article and be like death status. Death status. <laughs> the, the new tyranny. <laughs> yeah. Today. yeah, that's the new tyranny today. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Yep. The show. Yeah. Speaking of death status. Um, there was a hilarious meme that was uh, it was like I wonder if there's a Guinness Book of World Records entry for most lies told at the same time. Uh, yeah, and it had a picture Congress. of Congress being yeah. sworn in. Yeah, I just <laughs> sent you a swearing secret. an oath to the Constitution. I just sent you a secret uh, pigeon. Ah, uh, pigeon uh, okay. there. Pigeon well, then podcast. it's not a secret. <laughs> well, it is. Yes, I will, very I will follow the directive. Yes, not not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why yeah. can't you get your dad on here, man? I really want him on here. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Sometimes We've you can't get what you want. Pretty Michael. much had. <laughs> you what can't you do, always force get him? what you want. You're yeah, you're gonna call the cops. I'm gonna press him into cops. press him into service. <laughs> no, just um, make fun of him until he comes on. I can I can go upstairs and force him to come down. Do it. No, yeah. do it. Please but then I'd do be it. a hypocrite. Come I'd on, be a hypocrite man. then. No, 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 no go up, go up and encourage him. Uh, Where's he? Up? His house. It's his voice. Is he up his getting his, his uh, private right. property? Well, I'm there. I'm pretty good at persuading people, so I'll take a break and go persuade him to come <laughs> yeah. down. All right. Is he up there with his girlfriend? Just come no, and say, no. "Ew, you're with a girl. That is so gay." <laughs> <laughs> like on the Simpsons. He's making he's making babies. Ew, you kissed a girl. That is so gay. Here, no, I'll, he has his cootie shot from the government, so here, it's all I'll good. Go. Okay. I, I, I'm his, I'm his oldest kid, so I'll go during the long. Yes, break the see, oldest. See he cannot refuse a request from the oldest son. <laughs> On this, the day of the On oldest this. son. <laughs> yes. So war. Yes. There have been approximately fourteen thousand five hundred wars between thirty five hundred BC and now, costing three point five billion lives. And uh, leaving only 300 years of total peace in that time. Since when? When, when does that historical uh, Since uh, start? 3500 BC, basically since the beginning wow. of any kind of organized warfare. Right, right. Yeah. That's insane. That's a shame. Yeah, and it's, it's sad. Sometimes I'll talk to people about anarchy, and they'll be like, well, what would we do about war? <laughs> <laughs> there was no government. Without the, well, we, did a, we had a podcast titled what was it uh without the war who would drone the ch- without the government who would drone the children who would drone the children right right and it's like well war is a result of governments um fighting each other for use of resources and and fighting each other for a monopoly of violence over particular mm-hmm. areas so you get rid of the state you get rid of war and i always tell people too because some of them are like well the corporations would just build massive armies and nukes that's and, so stupid well i really don't think it, it's profitable for anybody the only reason states and governments can get away with things like that is because they have none, stolen money yeah they yeah. don't have a profit motive mm-hmm. they don't have a, a real budget concern because they can just run deficits so all they can all they are concerned about is increasing their power and they can do that off of the backs of us, the tax cattle, the slaves. Yeah, government are like fleas, which uh, we had a song about it, but I thought of another analogy about fleas was um, they used to think during the Middle Ages, like the plague ages, uh, the Black Plague, they used to think that fleas were good for people because (laughs) when someone was dying of the plague, they would have fleas on them. And as soon as they were dead, the fleas would jump off them. And uh, so they naturally assumed that fleas bring health and help you live. Um, when in fact, they were carrying the plague and they jumped off you when you died because your blood was no longer flowing. So the government is kind of like fleas, I think. 
I'd say they're more like the Black Plague itself. (laughs) Yeah, but people don't see it that way. People have that that problem with causation where they think that wet sidewalks cause rain. Uh, (laughs) I like to put the cart before the Did you come up with that one? I love that one. You said it before. I I love it. I think Butler Schaefer came up with it. It's really good. I don't know if he came up with it, but that's where I got it from. Yeah. Well, my fever Uh, dream, the best I could do is come up with uh, fleas. Fleas. (laughs) Federal law enforcement agents. Yeah. And of course, it follows the concept that they are nothing but... uh, Parasites, parasites. Yeah, poly ticks, yeah, many parasites. Although I, more and more, I really prefer the analogy of the government is really just people farmers. You know, <laughs> Stefan Molyneux's whole thing. Yeah, the, the tax yes. farms. We're just tax cattle, and and they like to make our cage Suck bigger and have us be free range slaves, so that we we're more productive. You know, you're more productive if you get to go home and watch Dancing with the Stars. Mm-hmm. And well, they're actually like, they're kind of going the opposite direction now, and. Um, there, there is the theory that that's going to backfire and that's going to be the end of the state. I mean, that's kind of um, Larkin Rose's thing of like, you know, if, if they – his how to be a successful tyrant thing is basically like yeah. give, give, give the slaves a little more, uh, a little more leash. More room. And they're not doing mm-hmm. that. They're, they're doing the opposite of that, which is going to backfire. Yeah, and-, and it's making more people just realize – like more people probably than ever in America don't like the government. Even people who are right. statists are like – it's so fucked up, man. They're not doing it right. The you know you know the Democrats blame the Republicans, Republicans blame the left. You know the left, right, whatever. Every nobody mm-hmm. likes Congress. I mean, yeah. I I saw a recent poll that said something like, um, uh, the idea of going completely communist in America has a, a higher rating than Congress has right now. <laughs> yeah, and Congress has like a six percent rating. I think is it that at least low? last is time it, I is, checked? Is it yeah. in single digits yeah. now? I think the flu has a higher rating than Congress. Probably seven <laughs> percent of people probably like the flu because they get to stay home and get paid by the government to not work <laughs> and drink lots of coffee. You know, the flu yeah. has a higher rating than Congress. Mm. <laughs> that should be the name of the episode. I think that might be. Although I like the pigeon thing, but yeah, it just kind of evolves. The flu has a higher rating than Congress. That sounds good. But then that won't work really with my pigeon picture. Yeah, it will. Well, we can save the pigeons for later. Pig- nah. Pigeons are timeless. They're evergreen. The flu. Well, pigeons can spread the flu, spread disease. So I'll, I'll still ah, use the ah, picture. Is that how it works? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, man. Fiends. Fiends are awesome, and worms are awesome, and pigeons are awesome. We uh we sold our first batch of um the the five buttons for ten dollars instead of four buttons for six dollars today. Oh, awesome, awesome! The That's new yeah. buttons y'all made: state speeches, yeah. hate speech. Yes. Yeah, yes. I gave Frank some of those. Frank yeah, yep. them. for sure. Now now you have to buy five for ten. But you know, and and people mm-hmm. may complain, but five buttons for ten bucks post paid is still pretty cheap compared to what people sell cool buttons for. And mm-hmm. those five buttons are a great starter pack for like, I mean, start and finish pack. I mean, really, like you have those five buttons, you have all the buttons you need in the world, and they really yeah. make a statement. Those five buttons. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you want to say what the buttons are? Do you remember the buttons? Yeah. Off the top I, uh, of I think I said them in the last cast, but we've got the state speech is hate speech. We've, of course, got the guns and weed, which is just guns and weed button. We've got the anarchy gumbo, which is the awesome anarchy shrimp. And uh, we've got uh, Freedom Fiend, one with our Freedom Fiend model wearing her Freedom Fiend t-shirt. And worms. We've got Freedom Fiend oh, one with just a bunch of worms. You're missing... Oh, no. Never mind. Those That's are different buttons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So... Nice set of anarchy buttons if anybody wants to go cop those. And yeah. it helps the fiends and it helps us to keep doing our thing because we know you like it when the fiends do their thing, baby, don't yeah. you? I like this comment. Pigeons eat worms for breakfast. They literally do. <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. I'm and then looking to chomp them up and throw them up into their pigeon baby's <laughs> mouths. I'm seeing uh, the pigeon baby mama's mouth. The pigeon baby mama's <laughs> throw them up. Baby you know, mama. I'm looking out the window. I'm seeing pigeons. I'm not seeing squirrels today. I think they're all asleep. It's probably too cold. They probably all froze to squirrel sickles. <laughs> yeah, man. They uh they live well. They're probably in the front of the house eating the peanuts that we put on the on the windowsill for them. Uh, you're not supposed to feed the animals, Michael. Yeah, Why? they'll get too complacent. Because <laughs> they'll they become get too socialist. Used to it, and then, and Actually, when you move away, and somebody mean lives there. Somebody mean lives die. there. They'll go across the street. The other guy feeds them too. Yeah. They're they're getting used to your your welfare. <laughs> they'll bite your finger too. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be like, Michael gave me a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Michael gave me a phone. Keeping Michael in fiend, you no. know. Keep Michael in resident, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back after this long break. Worms. 
Church. Pigeons. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Worms. Worms. What's up, Fiends? This is Freedom Fiends Live. Coming up on that second hour, if you'd like to call in to our live call show, that number is 307-215-5171. Again, that number is 307-215-5171. So, yeah. Um, did you get a chance to look at that uh, Muse video I sent you, Michael? Yeah. It was uh, really offensive to me, what they were trying to <laughs> really say. Really offensive to you? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, the Muse video we're talking about is called The Second Law, colon, unsustainable. Colon, like the punctuation, not like your dookie booty. And uh, <laughs> it's... I, I had a friend who's an Anglophile who uh, I visited with last <laughs> That's night gay. for a little bit. That's, that's, just that's just say heinous. he's gay. You can just say he's gay. <laughs> you don't have to use. Well, he's a what? For those who don't know, Muse is, is a band that's really big. They're they're really big in England, and uh, they've got a pretty big following here in the in America too. Um, <laughs> and you know, like a lot of bands, they're kind of lefty, and uh, they have this song. It's uh, sort of their dubstep offering. Like they, it's it's kind of got an EDM feel to it, and uh, basically the song is is this female reporter voice um, saying things. And, and what they're trying to do is trying to they're use trying to look the deep, second man. law. <laughs> they're trying to look deep, but they try to use the second law of thermodynamics to, to say that human, that the human economic growth is unsustainable. And if society is constantly trying to grow, then eventually we'll just fall flat on our faces. Um, the, the second law of thermodynamics goes like this. It's, it states that the entropy of an isolated system never decreases because isolated systems spontaneously evolve towards thermodynamic, e thermodynamic equilibrium. That's and also said, the short form of that is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Right, right. I've heard it, it said it, that way. And, and entropy is also, you know, uh, the move towards chaos, uh, disorganization. So your your body entropy is because you know it starts off, it gets organized, eventually it decays, and it goes back into dust, which is less organized than a human physical body. Um, the problems with this, and this is a really bad um, mythology and a really bad concept that I think has infected liberals' brains, is the idea that there's one piece of the pie, there's one pie, and uh, all wealth is taken out of that pie. Um, so we, ha we run the risk of, of ruining the economy if we buy too many things or if, uh, if corporations make too many things. Um, the irony is that this video is really, really high tech. They spent a lot of right. money making it and used what I would consider a lot of wealth, a lot of um, yeah. modern techniques of computer video editing and tricks and stuff that didn't exist that only exist because a lot of people bought stuff and brought the price of this down to where it was available, you know? Exactly, yeah. The disproof of their theory is in the video itself because the video is flashy, it's high-tech. Uh, people couldn't even make videos, music videos, 100 years ago. Well, that there's, there's actually a, there's a rule, there's, a, there's an unwritten rule that's kind of true of... Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, what's the thing of every year and a half uh, computing power doubles for the price Moore's law. There's there's Moore's sort law. of a there's a corollary of that that whatever Hollywood has four years later you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, whatever as as Hollywood, and, yeah, as far as everything, like techniques. four years, yeah. four years after late, you know, ever since computers, four years after Hollywood gets it, you get it. So right. these people right. definitely have stuff that, you know, four or five years ago, only Hollywood could have afforded. Right, right. And, and, and using the second law of thermodynamics to describe human action is inherently flawed because the human mind organizes things. It, it does, the human mind can do negative entropy. It can create a chair out of a dead tree. You know, uh, it can create all these things that we have, the microphone I'm holding in my hand, uh, the cell phone tower that I use to call you. Uh, those are all created by human action that actually increases organization within the universe. I think the other fallacious thing here is that, um, you know, the human societies aren't closed systems. We can extract new energy from the ground. We can pull fossil fuels out of the ground. Uh, and in new methods, we can do other things to create energy. Um, also, we have the solar system. You know, it, it, Once technology increases to the point that we can mine asteroids. So Earth itself isn't even a closed system. Basically, a year, of, brought into Earth. a year of liberal arts college combined with drugs and a guitar is a dangerous thing. You come up with <laughs> bullshit like this video. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah um, I completely agree. You know, I... I I never really like when people try to ascribe laws of physics to human ideals, which is Paul Bonneau's complaint with Stefan Molyneux's universally preferable behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Bonneau is who, who Paul Bonneau is a great alternative thinker, and he's a friend of mine. I know him in person, and he lives in Wyoming, and uh, he writes for Strike the Root sometimes, really infrequently, but it's mm -hmm. always great. And he has actually complained that uh, Stefan Molyneux's universally preferable behavior is trying to ascribe laws of physics to uh, libertarianism, which really Paul Bonneau says can't be done. And I kind of agree, too. Yeah, but I, I think Molyneux's universally preferable behavior has its uses, um, like in deciding if something is um, – can, can logically happen if a, if a principle can be applied universally to everybody. Um, you know, that's basically a, sort of his proof of the non-aggression principle. And so I think it can be useful. Um, I mean, I don't know how much of a laws of physics it is, and maybe I need to read UPB in order to get a better grasp on it. But something like, you know, we can't all murder each other all the time. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not logically well, possible. Well, but we so have been universally for, since 3500 BC, apparently. <laughs> right, right. You know, I mean, I think it comes down to like the other thing Paul Bonneau says is like, really, there's no such thing as rights. You know, there's definitely not rights granted by putting things in paper, but he takes it further to say like, there aren't even natural rights. The only rights you have are the ones you can keep, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they outlaw having good guns uh, and you still have a natural right in your heart to have those guns. The only guns you're going to get away with having are the ones you get away with having. Right. You know? I, I, I think, though, that rights are useful in conceptualizing what what is morally legitimate, and that is subjective because it's all in humans' brains. Um, in, in that way, it's subjective. But um, so, so I think it's useful. When I think of rights, I think of saying, well, somebody is right when they do this. Somebody is right when they own a gun. There's nothing wrong about owning a gun. So when I think of rights, I think it's, well, it's kind of like having the right away, right? I mean, people see it as legitimate for you to do that. Yeah. The universally preferable behavior thing, and I don't even know, I haven't read it either. I've read summaries of it and heard his description of it. So I shouldn't really criticize it. I'm just saying that someone else has, has read it and criticized it for that, <laughs> um, which is legitimate. I'm pointing out what yeah. someone smarter than me, Paul Bonneau, has said. But... Uh, you know, I, I do I do understand the if something works for something, it has to work for something else. Like Larkin Rose talks about how right. he went from minarchist to anarchist because he was making these arguments for the non-aggression principle, but making arguments for small government, and it just doesn't work. And if you want to be right. it's consistent, consistent, yeah, that's the word you use right. a lot, which I like is consistency. Right, right, and that's what I think. Molyneux tries to do with universally preferable behavior, and we can debate back and forth all day whether uh, he does a good job of it or not, or whether it's uh, workable or usable as a tool to make people understand things. Um, I mean, I, I guess for me, the jury's not out on that yet. Well, if head. he reads my book, User's Manual for the Human Experience, I'll read his book, <laughs> Universally Preferable Behavior. How's that? Okay. You know, okay, fair it's enough. like people come up to me up. and be like, you know, they, they'd be like, 
hey, I like your band. You kind of sound like Pink Floyd meets Dead Kennedys. Do you listen to Pink Floyd? And I'm like, do they listen to me? <laughs> they right, should. Right. Yeah. But of course you've lis- listened to Pink Floyd. Who else who yeah. hasn't listened to Pink Floyd? And then it got weird when you know me. Nirvana happened and it was like they were listening to me. It's kind of weird. Wow, it's kind of wow. like the radio talking back to you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like having your, having your heroes influenced by or at least fans of you. Right. It's weird. Speaking of Nirvana, um, I want to retract my hate towards uh, Paul McCartney uh, filling. He didn't really fill in for Kurt Cobain. You know, I, I kind of misread. I think we misread what happened Did there. you see it? Um, yeah, I actually it? saw the video. Yeah, I heard it. I saw it, watched the video. And what it was was apparently Paul McCartney was jamming with Dave Grohl, Chris Novacellic, and Pat Smear. Pat Smear was there too. So it was – like all of the original Nirvana, not original, but all the Nirvana members uh, from when they were except touring the one really that big. counted, yeah. Except yeah, except Kurt. except the one but that wrote were... all the songs and sang them, yeah. <laughs> right, but there were moments in there where it sounds like Nirvana. You know, when when Paul McCartney's not singing, he's just uh, well soloing. Kurt was influenced by Paul McCartney, so that yeah, would make yeah. sense. Yeah, and so um, actually, I have a few more things to say about that, and we'll say that in just a little bit after we go sell some things. Yeah. Worms. Yeah. Yeah. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy-to-understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Yeah, all right. And we'd like to say hello to Captain Jack, Ninja Kitty, and the whole crew down there in the Carolinas and our latest, newest affiliate that cannot be named... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. All right. Captain Jack. All right. And all of them. Yeah. Where's it at? We're getting some radio play. Where's that at? Somewhere in the Carolinas. Somewhere in the Carolinas. we got to be vague about it. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. Fiend Radio, baby. And um, speaking of Fiend Radio, we've got a caller on our live Sunday show. I believe we have Miles on the line. What's up, Miles? Hey. I was just a little bit irritated that I uh, was left off of your... Uh, Naughty or nice list, but uh, perhaps that's because I uh, took part in some gouging at the last gun show. <laughs> A lot of people some were gouging. upset to be uh, to be left off of of the uh, naughty and nice list. Well, I'll uh, I'll address <laughs> that first, and then we can address the gouging. So um, somebody else had mentioned that to me, and my response is there were Two multiple seconds. lists. Yeah, there are multiple lists. If if you looked at the the table in the B roll of Santa Claus picking up the list, there were several different scrolls there. So we only had time yeah. to show one list. There are multiple lists. So uh, I, let me check real quick, Miles. It looks like you were on one of the, the nice <laughs> lists. So and for the good, most part, there. for the most part, we did not put people who are uh, bloggers because they're already listed all over the fiends. <laughs> yeah. It's you a know, given. It's a given. Yeah. So we put people that uh, that aren't already listed a lot. And you're already listed a lot. Yes. Yeah, Asheville. Asheville. That. We want to say the shout out. It's to Asheville. Yeah, Asheville. All right. Asheville. There we go. All right. Uh, and so, Miles, some gouging? Do you mean price gouging? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Uh, I sold off a bunch of uh, guns and uh, magazines I didn't really use anymore at, uh, for a bit of a profit at the last show. But I wasn't the worst one there. The worst one there was a guy selling an original HK-91 for $5,000. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Did somebody buy it? I think they did. Uh, Wow. Well, that would get you on the nice list. If you tell what an HK-91 is, uh, for those who don't know, it's basically a battle Uh, rifle kind of foulish, huh? Right? 
Yes, uh, except it uh, runs on a roller-locked uh, system, and it's made by uh, the Germans instead of the Belgians, but uh, very similar weapons. Uh, I've seen know, those cheaper than, uh, cheaper than Fowls before. I mean, I've seen them, like, mail order for, like, 600 bucks. Oh, yes. And when they were originally sold in this country, they were, like, 400 bucks uh, direct from Germany. They're, well, they are cheaper to make than Fowls. You know, Boston in his gun Bible says that, uh, that a battle rifle at some point, you'll be able to trade it for 10 acres of land and a cabin or someone's daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't rule that out. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, he actually uh, gets a few things wrong about the, uh, the HK 91 in his book. The big thing being, he says it's, you know, the most reliable of all the battle rifles. It, that's not the case. Those have some serious reliability issues, even the original German one. I thought he said the Fowl and the M1 Grand were the most reliable. Uh, nope, they were the most, the easiest to use and certainly more than reliable enough. I had a the, Fowl uh, that broke all the time and I, I ended up selling it back to the place I bought it. It's one of those oh, really? DSA ones. DAS, DSA. You've American had bad ones. luck with semi-autos, though, Michael. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I, I think I'm just not meant to, which is why I've turned all <laughs> mine in preemptively. And uh, ah, yeah, well, I thought you I lost got, them in a boating accident. A voting accident. Yeah, the only a gun I've got, accident. I've got a, uh, <laughs> I've got a 38 five shot snubby, and I've got a 22 Derringer, and those are the only guns I'm going to have to ride out the apocalypse with, because you know they'll probably be legal for a while, and I, I want to be legal. I don't have any guns, man. Guns are bad. <laughs> well, well, Miles, was it was it a very profitable gun show for you and everybody else? Then is is what it sounds like. Everybody was making bank. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Really? Because <laughs> you know, the hey, last uh, time I went to a gun show like six months ago, except for the one last week I went to where I sold everything, but I don't know what was going on there. So, um, the last one I went to was like you know before they were threatening to outlaw everything. Was uh, not a lot of selling was going on. And everybody who's coming in was bringing a gun trying to sell, too. It's not like that now? Everything's selling? Not out here where I am. Everyone's what, selling like crazy. What part of the country? What? Uh... Northern Nevada. Huh. Wow. But, you know, we're right on the border with California. And uh, ah. I actually went shooting with a guy who lived in San Francisco a couple of days ago. And uh, he had some pretty, shall we say, not 100% legal weapons. And mm. I asked him, you know, how come you have those? How come you don't have, you know, bullet buttons and other things <laughs> to make them legal? And he says, he just doesn't care. <laughs> He's mm. never been busted at a California range, and he figures... Uh, he, really? He, he just, shoots them at public fun. ranges? Because public range... California has some nanny people and a lot of undercover people at ranges and a lot of gangsters at ranges. But, uh, yeah, a lot of cops at ranges. I've noticed that in California. I guess it depends yep, on the yep. part of California, though. I mean, near the Nevada border is probably a lot different than L.A. It's or a more San cowboy. Francisco. Yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah, but like... this guy lived in San Francisco. Oh. Huh. Wow. Did he limp wrist yeah. when he, uh, did he limp wrist his, his <laughs> pistol? <laughs> <laughs> out, as, as, as silly as this may sound, he actually did a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You make him less accurate or more accurate? Is there, is there something to it? Uh, well, it, uh, he was a little less accurate. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I was a better shot than he was, and that was one of the major reasons why we went out shooting was he hadn't gone <laughs> shooting in a long time, and he wanted a little uh, bit of instruction. Ah, okay. Hey, uh, Miles, I have a question for you. When you're at the gun show, what was the... What were AR-15s going for? Because I had a friend who went to a gun show probably a couple weeks ago here in Houston, and he said that he was seeing AR-15s go for about two grand. So, uh, what did you see over there? Wow. Yeah. Well, it varied uh, quite a lot, but uh, I didn't see a single one that had a price tag of less than twelve hundred dollars on it. And mm, uh, that wow. was like you know the cheapest ones you could find. Like stripped down with nothing on them. Yeah. I mean, those usually no, go for six hundred or seven hundred. Used to. Yep. That, that's that's not a usually. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, Obama stores promised, are running out. Obama promised to stimulate the economy. Apparently, he's done it in one tiny region of the economy. <laughs> right. Oh, right. yes, indeed. I, I, well, I kind of feel like things will settle down because I, I, my initial instinct was maybe I should sell some gold to get an AK, but now I feel like 
Um, this could blow over. At least I think there'll be some mm. kind of lull. You know what I'm or thinking? Some kind of dip, and I'm going to wait yeah. for that to happen. <laughs> I'm thinking or you could just drive up here some... right now, Nima, and uh, bring some gold. We'll work something out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could. Yeah, <laughs> although I I I don't like to drive from Salt Lake to Wyoming in the winter because I have to cross South Pass, which is not a fun thing. It's to bad do. road. Plus, I don't have my own car here. I flew. You you were like, I thought you dr- drove, and I'm like, no, I didn't drive 24 <laughs> hours to visit my dad. I hopped on a jet plane and got molested by the TSA for the third time in my life. Well, there's just one other little bit of advice I'd like to say about the subject of buying guns. Don't bother buying anything for the next couple of months because manufacturers are backordered. Some of them are like backordered two years. But if you want an AK, the one I recommend is the uh, Zastava PAP. Uh, so I just picked up a pistol version of one of those recently, and it is fun! <laughs> What's what, the cheapest they go for? Uh, what was it called again, Miles? Uh, uh, Zastava, P-A-P. Okay, okay. We'll check that out. Yeah, All right, thank you, thanks for the call, Michael, or Miles. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll be back after uh, we sell some things. Worms. Church. Order. 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 So you just finished watching all 90 minutes of Derek J's victimless crime oh, spree free yeah, it's up online on, uh, at victimlessCrimeSpree.com. Uh, and you're still hungry for more peaceful resistance? Head to yeah. order.victimlesscrimespree.com to pre-order Victimless Crime Spree, the director's cut the on what DVD. Nima, check out the this DVD thing I just not only you. features the exciting okay. full-length disc... Here, I'm going to show... I'm gonna it's show a title the called Ban... It's a it's a royalty title in Europe. Ban, a ban. <laughs> I know. Wait, can the, the fiends can still hear us, right? Yeah. Ban. Hey, I just showed uh, I just showed my dad the picture of the Papa fiend that uh, I think <laughs> Lefo sent us. <laughs> Did he like it? He goes, "That's an Indian man." Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> that's an Indian. We're not tell Indian. Him, tell him he has to get on here and defend himself. Uh, Pop, you got to get on here and defend yourself. What do you say? Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com That's freedomfiends.com his recording. lawyer has advised him to remain silent yeah, on this. Hand the mic. Let him mic control. I'm recording. No, he's asking Tell if him he's I'm being recording. detained. And <laughs> am I free to go? You're free to go, Papa. <laughs> I'm an American citizen. You know, you know we'll set it I up. I pay taxes. Dad said he, he, he could do it at some point in the future if we give him a topic and give him some... All right, Yo. Freedom Fiends, it's Nima Vidati. we got Michael W. Dean on the other end. We're joined here by Frank Naveed Vidati as well. Shit. What's up, Frank? Thanks Hi, for sticking Frank. with us. And you yeah. uh, wanted to go over a little bit of the etymology of the word ban, which actually started out as a title uh, in Croatia. Well, in I'm not sure that's century. where I'm not sure that that's where the current English word ban, like ban banning, uh, banning. Well, some, according it? to Wikipedia, yeah, there's in the etymology mm. section, the word ban has entered the English language probably as a borrowing from South Slavic ban, meaning lord, master, ruler. <laughs> yes. So um, it was a title, though, word, it's a Slavic title of nobility right, but, or power. Right, but it meant uh, it meant master of the house. Mm. So apparently, it fl- it entered into uh, the European or the English language as you know the master of the house has the ability to ban things. He gets to decide what's allowed in the house or out of the house, so to speak. Ah. Mm, bands hmm. to make her dance which i thought was why you had wanted to talk about it because <laughs> that's nah, i didn't read it to understand I that that's, that's where the that word comes great. from that is great <laughs> you know when i was a kid my, was my mother consequence right? my mother used to sort of jokingly call me master michael dean my ah. master michael wareham dean do you think that that had hmm. an effect on me i think it did i think so yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, it's it, it sounds very aristocratic doesn't it it does especially it does. especially the middle name Yes, Michael Wareham, the Right Honorable Michael Wareham Dean. No, it's, you're the Right Honorable Nima Vidati, and I am yeah. Lord Michael W. Dean, Sir right. Michael W. Dean. Of of course, um, 
It's just one theory that that's where the word band comes from. Uh, according to Wiki, the other assumption is borrowed from the Turkic language, uh, meaning ruler of the horde. Uh, so either way, it's th that's where the either way comes from. Either way, so you, when, when people you like get to tell people what to do. Right, right, and so, and so that's that's the nut of it. When people are like, "We need to, we need to ban semi-automatic weapons, or we need to ban this and ban that," uh, they're assuming that they're the master of your house instead of you being the master uh, of your own house. Uh, that's square, man. That's square and boring for people to do that. <laughs> it that's is, isn't it? Statist. Yeah, that's statist. That's statist. And look at go down down the page and look at this guy in his fancy coat. His uh, uh his very yes. His puffery, jo Joslip gel Jelly Neck, ban of Croatia. <laughs> yes, Jelly you Neck have a evolved into the neck beard. You have a Croatian gun. Uh, that's Frank who does, don't you, Frank? The macaron? No, that's no. Russian. You don't even know you have it. You don't even know you have it. Oh, have a the Springfield, the Springfield yeah, XD. Springfield XD. It says on it, made in Croatia. Yeah, I have a Croatian gun too. Wow. My uh, well, I don't have any more. I lost it in a voting accident. My uh, my <laughs> Yugoslavian AK forty seven variant was uh, I don't know. It's like Yugoslavia got carved up over lunch, and um, you know, then <laughs> <Before> tea. <laughs> yeah, then then Muslim assassins wearing tracksuits ran out looking for uh. You ever see Behind Enemy Lines? Great movie. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, you've the, seen it, Frank? Yeah. Oh. The Muslim assassin with the uh, the tracksuit in there is pretty scary. He's a, he's a good villain. Frank's seen more movies than me, so yeah. uh, if you ask me, I'm uh. like, no, nah, I probably haven't. But Frank, maybe. I'm yeah. somewhere in between uh, Nima and Michael as far as <laughs> movies I've seen. Yeah, yeah, but you, you don't have a higher rating than the flu. The flu has a higher <laughs> rating than Congress. <laughs> so it does. the European Union is banning cash transactions of over 500 euros. Speaking of banning. Uh, they've banned that or that's yeah. in did, their agenda? Mm, did they no, say the reasoning it. behind it? Uh, tax collection and uh, tracking terrorism. Um, yeah. Because terrorists use 501 euros. Yeah. I yeah. see. Yeah. Makes sense. The magical Jesus. cutoff, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. how much you know a that? nuke goes for in Eastern Europe. <laughs> uh, a, a Soviet nuke yeah. goes for yeah. 501 yeah. euros. 501. Well, following the lead, of course, of Italy, because we had talked about that a few months ago, how Italy was cracking down on cash transactions. Uh, <laughs> In so, post-Soviet yeah, Russia, of the fascist Italians is such a great idea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Wow, yeah, and, and of course that's just that's just a horrible concept. I that's mean, hard. cash is one of the few economic, um, private things you can do with your money is to to spend cash on something instead mm -hmm. of having a paper trail. And of course, yeah. they 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 probably justify it with, like Frank said, terrorism or, yeah. or even the war on drugs, um, tax. But really. Just an excuse for them to look at whatever the hell you're doing and scrutinize it centrally. Exactly. The every, central uh, scrutinizer. Every nation and state and subdivision of same is cracking down harder than ever on taxes and getting more like how can oh, yeah. we milk these aphids uh, that are our tax cattle better? Yeah, yeah, they are. And there's a lot of speculation as to how that will end up playing out. I mean, I hope, and in our theory, that it, it makes the iron hot so we can strike into people's minds the idea that there's no reason for this anyway. We don't need to be, um, we don't need to have people on our backs working off, living off of the sweat of our brows instead of living off the sweat of their own brows. Um, mm. So once they crack, the more and more they crack down, the more easy it is to explain this kind of thing to people and let them know what's really going on. Hopefully they can see it a lot easier if it affects their own personal lives. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you see this thing about uh, the Arkansas town that set up the full-time SWAT, SWAT patrols to take yeah. back the streets, including random ID checks? Yes. Yes, and, I did. How yeah. has that played out? Are they still doing it? Did They're planning they on sued? doing it. I think after January, at least from what I read. Well, it's January. Or from now. what I remember, I mean, after, after, after like January. February. Okay. <laughs> Once they buy another, like it matters. Cat. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, they got to get another shipment of ARs, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And it was it was sad to see that there were people that were cool with that uh, in the comments. And I think even in the news story, the reporter did some man on the streets and, of course, had the requisite quotes of people saying, well, I'm fine with this as long as it makes me safer. One says, yeah. sounds very American. Thanks for being patriotic and honoring our constitution. I don't know if that's sarcasm <laughs> or not. But I, I'm pretty sure that's that, sarcasm. Uh, that site, that that newspaper site is really weird. Like it keeps refreshing like every five seconds and you can't read yeah, it because yeah. the words jump around on it. Like, man, it, I hope it's not the same people in charge of, well, I kind of hope it is the same people in charge of like running the police that are doing the web design of the paper because they're completely yeah. incompetent. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it was such a tiny town too. I, I kind of feel like, is that really what they want to be doing? Is that really helpful? to their economy as a whole yeah, to go yeah. around harassing people and sure it makes jobs man. Money just to harass they probably people. get federal money for it so they feel like they're not paying for it ah uh, yeah some kind of department of homeland security grant yeah 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 it's likely uh when i was in washington state anytime there'd be something really crazy like that uh like getting grants of two hundred thousand dollars to put cameras all over the train tracks or the bridge uh, because terrorists might want to blow up a bridge and bumfuck Washington State. It'd always be Department <laughs> of Homeland Security money. Like, and there are people whose job it is to seek out these grants to yeah. try to pitch to the feds that that oh poor us we need more more tax money to do silly things like this. Do you know in 1971 there was a false alarm nationwide of the emergency broadcast system? Uh, no, I didn't. How'd that play out? Uh. For about 30 or 40 minutes, radio stations were broadcasting that NORAD had an event and everyone should stand by for further directions. And then find like somebody in NORAD like typed the wrong code or something. You know, <laughs> they, like they, they managed to type the all clear code, which was double zero zero one seven. And they typed double zero zero one eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary, man. Yeah, yeah. Was there mass hysteria? I guess not, or we'd know more about it. No, because right? it was it was basically a like stand by and we'll tell you what horrors are coming. They didn't actually uh, broadcast a horror. It was just ah, uh, yeah. Of course, There's, of course. Now that's built into all of our smartphones. Um, not mine. I got I an one. amber alert on my smartphone the other day, like as a text message, and I thought really? it was really annoying. And so I went to. You turn probably it had off. to pay for that. Did you have to pay for that? Do you have to pay to receive text? Uh, I think I get unlimited text, so I don't think it's a monetary issue. But, but then I went to try to turn turn it off, and I was able to turn off the Amber Alert, but there's an, another option in there for presidential emergency declaration. That is not disableable. That that was wow. grayed out. You can't you can't choose to turn that out. And we we talked about how they were going to do that a few like yeah, a year ago. I didn't know I didn't know. I just hadn't it. seen it implemented and put into action. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll have uh, plenty more going back after this short pause. To sell things. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Freedom Fiends Live. All right, and we're back for the last segment of the Freedom Fiends Live Sunday show. It's a very and, uh, family fiends today. Very family fiends. Cedric, do you want to grab the mic there? Well, we'll let Cedric riff on a little bit. I'll bring it up. He's a little bit nervous, I guess. <laughs> a little bit of mic fright instead of stage fright. Um, but there is a congressman from New York, uh, and he has proposed a bill that would end term limits on the presidency. I'm sure this is being talked about 
heavily in the libertarian blogosphere. Um, and so I guess we can give it a little bit of time here on our last segment. Um, I noticed Cedric, they didn't, they didn't did, bring this up while Bush was president for some reason. <laughs> well, I believe it's the Democratic uh, congressman, uh, or maybe he's yeah. a senator from New York. Who is he? His name now. Uh, let's see here. Cedric, why don't you go ahead and, and give us your first impression while I find this congressman's last name so we can out him. Well, basically, how I feel, or what I feel about this, is they're trying to turn him into more of a tyrant than he already is. You know, give him even more power than what like he's already king. got. Like a king. Exactly. Like a king. And, you know, um, the second or the 22nd Amendment was there to, you know, stop things like this from happening so that one person doesn't get reelected over and over again so the minority doesn't feel right. like they're... I, I do have a few counterintuitive things, uh, comments to make here. And uh, it looks like it was Representative Jose Serrano, a district from New York District, uh, or a Democrat from New York District 15. Um he sponsored the bill, and yeah, I guess initially it does seem kind of scary. Um, but didn't he? No, didn't he? His name sounds familiar. Didn't he do this like two year, like three years ago? Also, he did something horrible. I think I actually added something Let's to uh, well, his the, the, Wikipedia the bill page. that we're talking about is new. It was introduced on the fourth, so uh, a couple of days ago, uh, for this most recent Congress. Um, I don't know he's, if you want to born in Puerto Rico. his evil he's bills born in, and see if... He's born in Puerto Rico. Ah. Is he the Puerto Rican representative or the New York representative? He's a no, New York, New York representative. New York. All right. uh, he's yeah. a D New York. Um, he's a D bag what I was from say, New York. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> uh, is. To me, it seems like, you know, it's not like changing the presidential administration ever really changes any of the important things. I mean, okay, I he, really he has... At, he has introduced this bill in 1997, 99, 2001, 2003, 2005, <laughs> 2007, 2009, and 2011. That's interesting. So he did it while Bush was president. A bipartisan thing, a perennial thing for him. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I guess, I guess maybe it's more of a principled than a partisan thing on, on his part. I wonder what his reasoning behind it is, um, if you want to take a look at the actual He's bill. a fan of uh, Hugo Chavez. Ah, uh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess to me the whole term limits thing is irrelevant, right? When people say we need more term limits on congressmen and senators or we need to impose those on congressmen and senators, um, I don't know if that really solves the problem. Um, I don't know if it does much of anything. As Hans Hermann Hoppe pointed out when he was taking on democracy as a concept, um, part of the problem is is that there's such a short-term – uh, goal for all politicians. They don't get to actually take any sense of ownership in society or their constituency. It's all about getting the most um, loot that they can during whatever short time. So you shorten that time and they just loot more because they're, they're afraid that they're not going to be there for very long. Yeah, and his argument was that kings treated people better than in uh, representatives in a mm. democracy because kings had ownership well, and they wanted to pass the cattle on to their kids. Right. It's a long-term thing. They think of it as you know the family car or the family house or the family farm they want to pass it on to their kids. although I could I could also see someone with no term limits acting more and more like Hitler do what now I could also see the tendency if someone has no term limits to really just act like Hitler to just exterminate the people that get in their way yeah yeah I mean I suppose so I suppose it's a uh it's a catch-22, right? Mm. I mean, neither option seems very yeah. <laughs> ideal to me. Um, well, de democracy is just changing the face on a dictator every four years. Yeah. Right. That's an important point, Frank, is that it's it's not necessarily an individual that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, when Ron Paul says it's not Bernanke that's the problem. It's it's the concept of having a Fed chairman in the first yeah. place. Well, uh, I go back to like – presidency. It's, it's a concept of the American presidency, not the last name behind who, who's ever in the White House. I go back to comparing uh, statism and democracy to drug addiction. And, you know, there's a thing in, AA, in the AA book or the NA book about uh, trying to like – tool tool your usage to be a successful junkie and it can't be done you know like if you're a drug addict like people will do mm -hmm. things like 
only use on weekends or only use when things are only drink when things are good or only drink when things are bad or only never drink at home or only drink at home. And like right. none of that works. It doesn't change the disease in your head. And that's, that's what democracy is. It's a disease and you can't tool it to work at all. Right. It leads right. to if destruction addict, no matter you, what. If you're an addict, you can't be a recreational heroin user. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you just gotta swear off it completely, and and I do like that analogy of of statism as a drug, and we just need we just need a, another fix, right? We're in a predicament now. We just need uh, more three states laws from perfection to cover it over. Yeah, the three mm -hmm. laws from perfection concept, which I mean, look where it's gotten us. <laughs> things things seem to get worse and worse and worse. It's gotten it's gotten us to the flu have a higher has a higher rating than Congress <laughs> has a higher approval rating than Congress. Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, people are saying on the chat that the stream is not buffering or they're losing us. Uh, they should hit um refresh. Yeah, I was getting a little uh, hiccups from you too. I it sounds like it passed though. It might have been a Wyoming wind thing, an yeah. infrastructure thing. The squirrels and the antelopes fell off the uh, treadmill, <laughs> got blown wow, off. Wow, you're treadmill. not blaming it on the central scrutinizer this time. No, man, I was. It's uh, a new year, a new it is. year, it is. a new. It's a new year for new tyrannies. I reset my tyranny <laughs> counter the ticker. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you know, I always ask, uh, I always complain about the new year, like people aren't available. But you know, by now they mm -hmm. usually are. But I've been sick all week, so I haven't been available. And I got yeah, on Facebook. Hypocrite. It's like people feel like I just disappeared, man. Hypocrite, you're sick. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> I blame yeah. you. Not the state. I blame Michael. Jose Sereno. <laughs> yeah, I could see him with gold yeah. chains and a jogging suit. <laughs> oh, he's a gold that's tie. Racist. Yeah, he should go back to selling peppers. Yeah, <laughs> much more efficient use of his time. Yeah. <laughs> so, any um, closing comments here in the last three or four minutes we got from the family? Um, I don't know. Family, any closing comments? They probably won't hear from my family for another little while. So, Frank, you got any last words? For until the, the until the summer vacation start, and I can't get <laughs> you or the spring uh, vacations. No, I don't have anything to say. You want to say anything, Cedric? Put Cedric on. Cedric, say Here. thanks. Give Cedric the closing closing arguments. Um. Well, liberty is awesome. <laughs> so, you don't good. sound very enthusiastic. You sound like liberty <laughs> is awesome. He's a 15 year old that comes yeah. with the territory. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> is that sarcasm? Sorry. I don't even I know. Anymore. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> That's a Simpsons <laughs> reference. Yep, and a good one at that. Oh, Jose <laughs> Sereno. So Jose Sereno replaced Charles Rangel. Wasn't he uh, kicked out for massive fraud or something? Yeah, it was unethical activity. Whatever they were using. Ta he that touched to his weenus use. under the under the microphone. <laughs> no, I thought it was uh, some kind of bribes. Uh, yeah, and well, sure. he was the one that wouldn't step down, and like the Democratic, like Nancy Pelosi was telling him to step down, and he's like, "Right, no, I earned this seat. I haven't been convicted <laughs> yet. I'm staying." I'm right, still, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was uh pretty much on the same level as the Wiener Sickle, but uh, the Wiener Sickle, yeah, the Wiener Sickle. <laughs> yeah. Did Wiener refuse uh. to step down? He fought it. He fought it. He didn't seem to go too willingly. Yeah. Initially, and, again, at least. And, and, you know, again, it always comes back to, like, people get all upset because some adult took a picture of their weenus and sent it to some other consenting adult, when really, like, <laughs> these people are stealing and killing everybody all the time, and that should be the issue. There's, there was right. actually an onion about that recently. It was, like, Americans shocked to find out about Afghan war while reading about... Uh, Sex about scandal Petraeus, with sex Petraeus. Scandal. Yeah. 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 Well, there was the amazing uh, cartoon with Droney the Drone as well, where the Droney yeah. was explaining to Petraeus uh, or bragging about all of the people the drone killed, uh, was talking to Petraeus. You know, it's a personified drone. <laughs> and um, Petraeus was like, well, you know, tell that to the next guy. I'm getting kicked out. And Droney was like, really? Why? And Petraeus <laughs> is like, I had an affair. <laughs> and Droney looks at Petraeus and is like, humans are weird. <laughs> Yeah. Well, drones are just mechanical pigeons when it comes down to it. <laughs> yes. With upgraded pigeons. With with lethal poop. <laughs>
That's an image right there. It's been a good family All right, friendly, Ains. family friendly edited fiends here. Yeah, yeah. Utah good friendly, times. Utah friendly family fiends. A very Mormon fiends. It's, it's a clean a very fiend. Mormon fiend. Clean fiends. Worms. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you in a couple days. Cheers. Yeah.